My name is Pam Cranbeck, an instructional technology facilitator here at ESU 3, and I'll be working with Janet Foss during this face-to-face -face session on giving you some strategies for using 21st century tools for communication and collaboration as you're working with your word lists, um, specifically with reading vocabulary. And so welcome back. We're glad you're here, and hopefully you'll get some ideas that will work for you. You can see that I am at the Fort Calhoun Project Wiki Space. Um, the web address is up here at the top, fc-project.wikispaces.com. You should also have an orange sheet that you received at the face-to-face -face session that has that particular address in there. But if not, you can just take a minute and um, take note of that particular address. And the place that we're specifically going this time is to the Vocab and 21st Century Skills Google Survey and Docs link along the left side. I believe it's the sixth one down. So we'd like for you to click on that and what we're going to do is we're just showing you a way to use something called Google Docs specifically Google Forms within Google Docs um, to gather the results of a survey and the survey questions that we're using um, Janet included on an anticipation guide that was passed out to you um, that looks similar to this you can see the first question is creativity is the most important 21st century skill to develop with students and this particular activity you could also do in paper or you could do it with the Google form that we've shown you I'm just kind of taking you back to the page I'm going to scroll down just a bit and show you where those anticipation guides are. Down here, the last two links at the bottom is the anticip anticipation guide excuse me, um, that we used for our session and also a blank anticipation guide that you could use and write your own questions for the students to respond to. So that is what we used as the basis for this survey link here near the top. And so we'll take the, the survey for before, so you want to make sure you hit that first link. And so you're going to click that before survey link. And then you'll answer these questions. And so it's very straightforward. Um, I believe there are, it looks like, four questions on here and a submit button at the bottom. And so you'll respond to each question. So here's the first one that we saw earlier. Creativity is the most important 21st century skill to develop with students. And you'll click agree or disagree. And you'll continue down answering those four questions that appear. And once you get done, you'll hit the submit button. And what we'd like to do then is show you where your results will come in. And so let me just get there. And because I've set this up, I have the pre-vocabulary survey as one of my documents. And as each one of you answers the question, it timestamps the response as it comes in. Each question appears in row one of this particular spreadsheet with the question and then below that it has your timestamp and then whether you agreed or disagreed to each one of the questions and so there are 40 people I know that by looking at my form to see how many responses I have there are 40 people that have responded to my survey at this point if you would choose to respond you would be response 41 and that would show up down here near the bottom so you can just kind of see how it date stamps each one and sees how they come in what's really helpful to me as I use this tool is what's available under the the heading form up here at the top I really like this show summary of responses to see a graphic um, representation of the responses so I'm going to click on that so you can see it and you can see it shows me that I've had 40 responses at this point and then it gives me a graphic representation and how many agreed and disagreed to each question so you can see each one of those is visually represented in this particular um, summary of responses. And so I really like that. If I want to go back and see the actual form as it was, was shown to the people who responded this, I have the address for that down near the bottom. Once I've looked at that, I simply just use the red button to close that down and it takes me back to my spreadsheet. So again, you respond to the survey and then it dumps those responses into the person that created its account. If this is something that you're interested in, where you think um, you would like to create a form similar to this, um, you would have to have a Google Docs account to be the creator of the document. Um, people responding to your survey do not have to log in as you didn't. You did not have to log in.
Um, to show you how that might work, you do have to have a Google account. And on the Fort Calhoun Project wiki space down near the bottom, here is the handout on how to create a Google account, if that's something that you're interested in. And then the steps that I'm getting ready to go through on Google Forms appears right here in this handout, googleforms.pdf. Um, so know that those are available to you. So I'm going to go back to Google. Let me get to the right window here. So I just go to docs.google.com. And that address is on the handout. And I simply log in. So I use my logon and my password. And you can see here is the sample survey that we just did. To create one, I'm going to click on Create New. And I'm just going to go to Form, which is also another word for survey in Google Docs. And then I type a name for my survey. I'm just going to call this Fort Calhoun Sample. And then your directions would be here. Um, so if you wanted to give them some directions, like click um, the correct response or provide the information requested. Again, you can put anything, or if you decide, you can put nothing in there. That is entirely up to you. And then you put in your first question. I'm just going to ask, what is the meaning of the vocabulary word? And maybe I'll put quotes around it, defense. And I'm going to give them a whole paragraph to answer. So notice for question type, I chose paragraph type. I put my question here. And then when I'm done with it, I simply say, make this a required question and say that I'm done with that particular question. Notice I have a second question here. If you want to get rid of that, you could hit the trash can. But I'm going to go ahead and click on the pencil to edit that and say, do you understand the meaning of defense? So just kind of gathering some feedback from students. And I'm going to do a checkbox on this one and say yes, no, just so you can see how you might use this when teaching vocabulary. And then I'm going to click on Make This a Required Question and say that I'm done. Now, if you'd want to add another question up at the top, you simply click on Add Item. Tell it what kind of item you want to add. I'll do a paragraph text this time. And then you put in your question here and then what kind of question it was going to be. You could make it a required question and you'd hit done. If you do get a question in here you don't want, you simply click on the trash can to delete it. And it comes up to make sure that you know you're discarding the question. I'm going to click OK to go back to my two questions. And you could continue adding questions to that if you'd like. Um, in the example that we did earlier, we had four. I'm going to go ahead and add a theme to this. So I'm going to click on Theme Plane here at the top to change that and make it a little bit different theme. And you can see that it has a lot of um, holiday-related themes in addition to many others. I'm just going to scroll until I find one that I like. Um, let's go with the Bluebirds. That looks kind of springy there. And so you can see it just kind of adds a theme and makes our, our particular um, form or survey look a little bit more professional. And puts my directions at the top, puts my questions in there. You can see it's changed the font color to correspond with the theme. And then it's got my submit button at the bottom. So you could pick one that you think looks good. And if you like that, you hit apply. And then you could continue editing your form if you'd like. Or in this case, I'm ready to just close that down. And um, the only thing I have left to do is take note of this web address. And that web address is what you share with people so that they can get to your particular form. I'm just going to drag over it and go Edit Copy. And then I would either paste that in an email, paste it as a link on a web page, or I can send that out. And I'm just going to for the benefit of showing you um, what it can do, I'm just going to paste it into a web browser and navigate there. And you can see now anyone with that web address could then answer my survey. They did not have to log in. It just takes them directly to that particular 
particular place. Um, if I want to then, I'm just going to close these down so you can see it. Um, on my um, Google Doc account now, I have this Fort Calhoun sample that shows up. So I'll just click on that. And you can see I have the timestamp and my two questions in here, just waiting on people to respond. If for some reason I need to go back and change one of the questions in the form, if I've misspelled something, I've decided I want to add another question, I click on Form here at the top and go down to um, Edit Form. And it takes me back where I was previously so that I could um, edit it with the pencil and change change wording if I'd like. If I want to add another question, I could click on Add Item. So that is kind of how you use Google Forms in a nutshell, and it's just an excellent tool um, for communicating and collaborating with students.